it's not just Alice Springs that's got a shocking problem with youth crime. And in this case, the problem is not just with Aboriginal youths either. What on earth is going on in Queensland? Now, yesterday, we had worried locals in Toowoomba filed it. You know, they filled a meeting called by police on the very day that a 16 year old girl was allegedly shot and seriously injured by another girl just 18 in a Toowoomba pub. Also alarming the locals was the death in Toowoomba last week of Robert Brown, 75 years old, died after being allegedly pushed over and robbed. Five youths have been charged over that. But all around Queensland, there are now similar stories. In 2021, police officer Jennifer Broad, just 22, hit and killed by a stolen car, allegedly driven by youths. Then a drunken, drugged 17-year-old in a stolen car, hit and killed Matty Field and Kate Ledbetter as they walked their dog. Last September, Michael Warburton was killed after being hit by another stolen car, allegedly driven by a 15-year-old. Last Boxing Day, Emma Lovell was allegedly stabbed in the chest and died while fighting off teenage intruders in her home. Her husband was also stabbed. And on it goes. Last month, a 43-year-old man stabbed to death near his Brisbane home, 17-year-old, charged with his murder. Last week, an Uber driver allegedly killed by, again, two more teenagers. But nowhere has the crime wave been worse than in Queensland's north, places like Toowoomba. Joining me is the local member there, Federal Liberal MP, Garth Hamilton. Garth, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this meeting yesterday, how worried are locals? How bad has it got? Well, look, the reports back that we've had from the meeting were very concerning because, quite frankly, uh, there was a lot of talking but not much listening uh, from the Queensland government there. We've been watching this crime wave grow in intensity in our uh, beautiful town of Toowoomba uh, for some time now, Andrew. It started off with break-ins, with car thefts. We started to see assaults become part of that and the uh, tragic uh, cases that you've just described over the last two weeks have, have been absolutely devastating for our community. Robert Brown was a, a lovely, well-known man around town who, in a kind, gentle way, just took photographs of the area around him. Um, to, to see the manner of his assault, and it was recorded on camera, it, it's, it's absolutely confronting uh, for everybody. But th this has been growing, and there's a clear cause to this, Andrew. Uh, the Queensland Government decided to muck around with the Youth Justice Act. They decided to make changes. Breach of bail no longer was an offence. They directed magistrates to use detention as a last resort. And instead of focusing on the minimum sentences, uh, they, they, they talk about maximum sentences, which are never used. So there's, there's no appropriate punishment. Andrew, I don't want to see more kids in detention. I just want to see less kids committing these barbarous crimes. Now, Garth, um, it's very hard to diagnose a problem and, and figure out solutions until you know who is responsible. So, in so far as you can, uh, who are these youths that are causing so much trouble? Now, in Alice Springs, it's been Aboriginal youths. Uh, where you are, what's the problem there? What are the common factors you're looking at? Look, we've seen a large uh, homelessness growth in our region. Uh, Toowoomba serves as a, as a hub for so much of Western uh, Queensland and even down into northern New South Wales. People have always come there. And that's what, been one of our great strengths, quite frankly, that, that, that people come, bring that energy uh, to Toowoomba. But sadly, what we've seen is that people are now coming and seeing opportunity in Toowoomba, opportunity for crime, particularly as our region goes ahead. Uh, recently, the local uh, TSBE, the uh, Enterprise, released figures. We've got $18 billion of investment, both public and private, going on. We're a town that has been growing and getting ahead. The sad opposite side of that is that uh, criminals who want to cause uh, trouble uh, have opportunity to do so, and, and they, are, they are doing it. And there's a direct link, Andrew, an absolute direct link between the state government's uh, decision uh, to water down uh, the laws uh, for youth crime, and it's, it's hurt us, our local police, uh, sadly, uh, no longer able to contain this crime wave. And that's a terrible thing to say because I stand right beside our local police, but they'll admit to me, as they will to everybody, without the support of the state government, this crime wave will continue to get worse. 
Uh, notice there you didn't want to answer the, uh, you know, whether there was some sort of pattern like race, for instance. So that's fine. You might not know, so I'm not going to push it. No, Andrew, I'm, 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 I'm more than happy. The there, there appears to be no pattern. There appears to be no pattern. It is, it is, it is a, a wide range of people committing these crimes. And unfortunately, it is, it's more an issue of just the opportunity that has been made available to children, uh, any children, that they can get away with their crimes over and over again because breach of bail is not an offence. So they're learning that they can commit a crime... Uh, they, we've had people who've had 80 charges against them, but um, never a single conviction. So they can just keep going and going and going. Uh, this is what the I'm state government to educate I'm glad you people. sorted that out, because that makes it easier to, um, you know, f fix on what are the problems. And I'm struck by what you say, because it, it fits in with a, a, a fact that Queensland actually has the highest rate of youth offending in the country and... More than half the youths sentenced to detention or probation, more than half are before the courts again before a year has gone by.